In this video, I'm gonna show how you can use simple Microsoft Excel shapes, things like rectangles and circles, to create a dynamic interface to report on your data. Let's take a look. Now, before we jump in and start to create these shapes with dynamic content, let's take a look at what we're actually gonna be creating. Open in front of you, I've got the completed version of the document. It's called com-customer-orders-01. It's an Excel file. This is gonna be available and the working file in the video description directly below the video. Look for the Office New Blog link and you can download these two files from there. So the COM, it's completed. I've already done all the work. You can use it to poke around inside of as you create your own. So here, it's got two worksheets. I've got a customer orders worksheet, which has got a simple table on it, and a calculations worksheet. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. Now over to the right, I've got a cell with a dropdown that lists all of the unique products available inside of this list. So one of the columns in the list is product name, and I've just got a list of all of those products right here. Now I can click on that drop down and I can pick a product. There we go. But the magic comes into play when the user hits the plus sign here. This will show relevant data for that product. So I can see for this product, we've got an order count of 44, total quantity of 1,057, total sales of 18,000, and so on. If I hit the minus sign, this will hide those values. I hit it again, expand it out, and I can just come in and pick different products to get their relevant data. Now, these little boxes here, they're just simple Excel shapes. Insert, shapes, you've got loads of them. The magic comes into play because we can point these boxes, their content, to cells or the values of cells. On the calculations worksheet, I've got a handful of calculations here, and these boxes are just grabbing their data from those cells on that worksheet. So get ready. We're going to build this out from scratch. Take a look. So let's jump in and let's build out the boxes. That'll be our first step. Now open in front of you, I've got the second file. This one's just called customer orders-01, and it's a standard Excel file. So our first step, we're going to build out four little boxes to place on this worksheet. So all I'm gonna do, go to my Insert tab, go into Shapes, I'll grab the Rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna left click and drag to create a nice little rectangle here. Now I'm not too concerned at this point about the size of the box. Let's just get a box out there. Now that's just one of them, but I need to create three more. So really simply, I'm just gonna select that box, Control-C to copy it, Control-V to paste it. And I'm just gonna do that two more times. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, and I'll just move them around just to get those boxes out there in a rough position, and we'll call it good. Now, once I've got the boxes created, my next step is I need to name those boxes, because eventually we're gonna make a reference to each of these boxes to not only place content in it, but to show and hide them dynamically based on a button press from our user. So next step, we'll name them. To name the boxes, we'll go to our Home tab, find and select to the Selection pane. And this will open up a pane selection on the right-hand side of your screen. Now here we can see each of the rectangles that we've just created. So it looks like Rectangle 10, in my case, is the first box. I'm just going to rename that. I'll call it uh, Sub Shape 01. And I'm just going to go through and name each of them, subshape 2, subshape 3, and so on. All right, so I've got all of my boxes renamed there. If you want to change the order, it's just a click and drag. So I can grab number 1, drag it to the top, grab number 2, and so on. Not necessary, but makes it much cleaner and easier to read here. So try this out first. Create four simple little rectangles. Lay them out just down below that product name box and make sure you name them. 
subshape 01, subshape 02, and so on. Get that done, and then we'll jump into the next part. So the next step is to give these boxes their values. Now remember, our values are actually based on formulas inside of the calculations worksheet. So if I hop over to calculations, you're gonna see a few cells in here that contain formulas. The first one, we've got the order count. I've just got a simple formula that returns the number of orders based on the current product selected back inside the customer orders worksheet. Then I've got a total quantity, a total sales amount, and an average sales amount. This area here, products, is where the dropdown back inside of customer orders receives its data. Now, each of these formulas at the top are just using a simple formula. I've, in this case, I'm using a count if. Here, I've got a sum if, another sum if, and a text function to do some formatting, and an average if with the text function to do some formatting. Now, there's some other things happening in there. We've got some concatenating. We've got the, at, the ampersand symbol in there to combine values, text values with other values. And I'm using the char function to create a line break. We'll see that here in a moment. Now, all I'm going to do is get those boxes to point to these formulas. So back to customer orders. I'll select my first box. With it selected, I'll go to my formula bar, equals, go to my calculations, and I'm going to select A2. There it is, calculations, explanation mark, A2. I'll hit my enter key. And there it is inside of my box. Now I'm just going to repeat this three more times. I'll go to my next box, equals, calculations. Here I'll grab the total quantity in my enter key. There it is. And I've got all of those values from those formulas on the calculations worksheet now inside these boxes. So you can format them. You can do what you like with them. I'll select my first one. Go to my home tab, and I'm just going to change some formatting here. Maybe I'll bump up the font size, change the color, whatever you want to do there. Change the alignment. I'll leave that part up to you. You can pause the video and format all those boxes right there. Now, we've got one more shape to create here. This shape is going to act as a button that when the users click on it, it'll either show or hide these subshapes that you've just created. So I'm going to create just a simple plus sign. I'll go back to my insert tab, back into shapes, and I'm going to grab the plus sign. I'll select that. I'm just going to come out to my worksheet, left click and drag just to create a little plus sign. However big, however small you want to do there. And I'm going to change the color. And you'll see that my shape format tab is selected because that shape is selected. And here I'm just going to grab the green style there. Or we can go into shape fill and grab a color from there. I'll leave it up to you. But now we've got a simple little plus sign there that eventually is going to act as a button to show and hide these rectangles that you created earlier. So get that plus sign out there. And then we're going to build a little bit of magic with just a little bit of VBA to get the dynamic elements to show and hide based on a button press. So now that we've got all our shapes created, our next step is to create just a little VBA procedure here that's going to dynamically show or hide the shapes based on a user button press. So before we get in there and create this code, we need to do one more naming of our shape. We created our plus sign, but I forgot to rename it. So with that selected, we're going to go into our selection panel. And remember, to get to that, you're going to go to Home, Find and Select to Selection Pane. Let's make sure that that's open. Inside of there, I've got my shape. Mine's called plus sign 14. Yours might be plus sign 10 or plus sign 5 or 1, whatever it is. I'm going to rename it. And I'm just going to call this Show Hide. And again, no space. Show Hide, all strung together. I'll hit my Enter key and we've renamed that button. Now, VBA, this is gonna be a really simple script, and really, I'm just gonna have you copy and paste it. I've already created it for you. But all the script is gonna do is essentially turn these shapes on or off based on the user pressing this button right here. 
Inside the selection panel, just to the right of each of the shapes you created, we got a little eye icon, right? Like your eyes. If I poke one of them in the eye, boop, it will turn that one off. Its visible property is now false. If I click it on the eye again, it'll change the visible property to true. And that's all the script is gonna do, is just go through and say, hey, when the user presses this button, if they're visible, then poke them in the eye, turn their visible property to false. If they click the button again, then if the buttons are not there, then show them, right? That's all it's gonna do, just turn that visible property on and off for us. Now the script, I've already created it for us. All we're gonna do is just copy paste it into the VBA window, set it up, and we'll be golden. So if you haven't already, there's a third file inside of the link below this video. It's called show hide subshapes VBA-01, and it's a simple text file. So find that one, download it. We're just gonna copy paste this code into the VBA window of Excel. I'll also try to put it inside the comments section of this video so you can copy paste it from there. I haven't tried that before, so we'll see if that works. If not, the file is there as well in the link below. So I'll get that off my screen for a moment. To get into the VBA window, I'm gonna give you a shortcut key. On your keyboard, press the Alt key, Alt, and the function key, top of your keyboard, F11, Alt, F11. This, there we go. This will open up the VBA window. Mine showed up on my other screen. I'm just gonna resize it here. There we go. This is your VBA window. If you haven't been in here before, not a problem. I do highly recommend learning some VBA, but if not, you're brand new, totally fine. Our first step, let's make sure that we have our customer orders hyphen zero one project selected. We're gonna go to the insert tab to module. We're gonna insert a module or place to paste this code. Now, I'm gonna go into the text document. I'm gonna highlight all the code there, copy it, and I'm gonna paste it into the module. Boop. There we go. So I've got my show hide shapes procedure or all the code in there. And there's a bit going on in here. It is really simple if you were to sit here and dissect it. All it's doing is it's using an if statement, kind of like an if function inside of Excel that says, hey, if you find a shape called subshape01, check its visible property. If it's equal to true, then turn them all to false. Make them go away. So if they're already there, turn them off. And change the little show hide icon to a plus sign. Make that a little bigger, to a math plus sign. Else, so if this is not true, else turn them to visible. Turn that visible property to true and make the shape a minus sign. So we're gonna toggle that button from a plus to a minus sign and back again. And that's it, a simple little procedure. Copy, paste, drop it in there. You do wanna make sure that your shapes are named appropriately, right? We're using subshape 01, 234. We're using show hide for the plus sign. Now one, two, three, four again. Just make sure that those are matching up for what you name the shapes inside of your Excel document. All right, now that I've got that in there, I can close the VBA window. We'll get back to Excel. And we got one more thing to do. Get that done first. Copy paste that code from the text document into a module of the VBA window. All right, you ready for this? Last step here. So we've got the shapes, we've pointed the shapes to their values, those calculations on the calculations worksheet. We've created our button, we've got our VBA code in there to show and hide, but now we need to add the code to our little plus sign button. And this is really simple. If I go to my plus sign, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go down to assign macro. This will open up my assign macro window. I'm gonna grab the one that says show hide subshapes. Now that might be the only one you have in there, which is great. Let's grab that one and I'm gonna hit okay. All right, here it is. 
I'm gonna click away from the button just so I deselect it. Got my little plus sign there. If I hover over it, you now got a little finger icon. It's now a button. If I click with that little finger icon, this will hide them. If I click it again, it'll show them and we get a minus sign there. Click again, show, hide, show, hide. If I go to my, my product box, click on the drop down. I can select a different product, get updated values in there. But we got a nice dynamic setup here. You can show and hide those values all in this nicely formatted shape driven interface inside of Microsoft Excel. So try this out. Right click the button, assign the macro and try it out. That's it with just a handful of simple rectangle shapes inside of Microsoft Excel, we've created a very dynamic and pretty good looking report for us and our users. Four little boxes, pointed those to some formulas on another worksheet, added just a little bit of VBA magic in there to show and hide those buttons or those shapes, and we've got a nice snazzy report. Make sure you try this out. You've downloaded the files, open them up, Go through the steps, rewatch the video, pause it, whatever you need to do. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, you learned something new, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. That helps me, not only within YouTube, but it also helps me know if you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get updates about new videos on Microsoft Excel and other Office applications that we post to this channel each week. So make sure you try this out and I'll see you in the next video.